All right, party people, welcome to the program. You know who I am. I am rolling the move. And once again, in the studio, I got my co-host, comedian Bernard Bell. What up, Bernard? What's going on? What's going on, Merle? That's what's up. What's up? And let's go ahead and get into today's topics. We're going to go ahead and go over the sports, entertainment, and social issues. And first, let's talk about the playoffs, man. I mean, I'm not happy. <sighs> Neither am I. Golden State got to get it together. I do not, <clears throat> excuse me, I do not want to see Boston win at all. Like, I don't want them to win no more games. <laughs> I don't. Um, uh, it's like this, man. Uh, so, right now, it's tied up, right? You got, I'm a Lakers fan, big time. So it's tied up. You got the Lakers. It has 17 uh, championships. You have the Celtics. They have 17 championships. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Right? The Lakers and the, and the Celtics have the most championships in NBA. And we're tied 17 apiece. So if the Celtics win, they'll be at 18. Yeah, okay. So I definitely <laughs> won't go over the state to win. I definitely don't want to see them do it. That's true. That's true. Oh, oh, wrong one. Oh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's talk about what happened. So... Golden State was up first quarter. My man Steph Curry, the chef, was doing his thing. 21, what, 21 points, six three pointers, something like that, close to it. And, and he disappeared in the second quarter. <clears throat> Nobody else on Golden State seemed to do anything. Like, nothing, nothing, nothing. Move this mic over here, see if this will make pick up a little bit better. It sounds like it's kind of. Let's see, what about now? Uh, hit that one. Yeah, that was better. This is that one. All right. So yeah, so um, my my thing was so if 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 Boston doesn't win, get that mic is anyway. If Boston doesn't win the next game, because you know that was in Golden State, so right. Golden State was supposed to, and he ain't lost the whole game in, in a long time. So Golden State was definitely supposed to win that game. Yes. Um, if they lose this next game, what's gonna happen? Because they're going to Boston, man. And Boston is crazy. The Garden is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I mean again, I don't want to see them lose, but. I don't think they're going to because, again, like they probably needed that punch in the mouth to wake them up. And, you know, it probably got everybody on the team fired up. So I'm we'll hoping. see. The, the Bigs is playing good. I think it's a good matchup, though. Uh, Draymond Green going up against uh, Al Horford. That's a pretty good matchup. Um, the young the young kid for Boston with the dress. Can't think of his name. Uh, going up against Looney. Smart. No, no. The tall, the big uh, kid. The uh, big kid. Williams. 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 Yep, that's his name. <clears throat> Him going up against Kevon Looney. That's a good matchup. Yeah. Big and big. You got Smart going up against um, uh, um, uh, he's Steph. Like Steph. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And he's crafty. He's good defensive player. And his offense is worse. I didn't think he could shoot. That's because they leave him open. Anybody can hit a wide open shot. <laughs> I mean, he, oh, no, don't get me wrong. He's a professional <laughs> basketball player. But when you backing up, letting them shoot, you yeah. can't do that. The same thing with Al Horford. Like, as much as I don't like him, Al Horford is probably one of the most dependable, fundamentally sound players. Like. You just got to press it. That's all. He's not going to hit contested threes. And it's weird. He's like, he's like, he shoots so awkwardly, right? His set shot is so weird. And it's a set shot. He's not jumping. jumping just yeah. jump straight in the air. And it's a line drive. There's no arc to his no shot arc. either. No arc. So, I mean, but yes. I'm not a coach. I, but, again, I always say, and this is probably going to sound mean, <laughs> but it's true. If I'm a coach and the team got a player that's cooking my team, I'm going to use the 12th man on my team. Bro, you got five fouls. Use them. Like use them. F- five hard fouls. Okay, if you get a tech, I'll pay your fines. If you get a flavor, I'll pay. Use it. I know people are going to be like, you shouldn't say that, but I, I, I don't care. I would do it. It's a game. You play to win you the game. You play to win the game. And that was Dennis Green said. Yeah, that was after, I think, didn't the Bears beat them? Yeah. When they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was happy. You play to win the game. Yeah, that, was, that, viral. that went viral before viral was viral. <laughs> Shout out. God rest the dead, Dennis Green. I, I thought he was a good coach. Man. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's the NBA Finals. It's dope. It's, it's great. The Finals plays. It starts tomorrow. Uh, second game is tomorrow. You know, I like the Finals. We'll see what happens next year. LeBron's coming back. They, I don't The coach, they, Darvin Ham. Hey, Darvin Ham. Do you even know who Darvin Ham is? Do. Y'all probably don't even know who Darvin Ham I is. I do, and I'm going to tell you now, that's a good fit. What? And let me explain. He ain't won nothing. Okay, uh, Jason Kidd had came in. Look at Steve Nash. They Kidd. gave Steve Nash a chance. He was Kidd not got a coach. ring, don't he? He who? With Dallas. Who do? Jason Kidd got a ring. He beat LeBron. Yeah, okay, but he got a ring, bro. how did he end up coaching? He went through Milwaukee. Then he went to the Lakers. And then he went. Leave Darvin right. Ham there. I'm going to tell you why. Because Darvin Ham was assistant <laughs> for Milwaukee. Okay. But where was, was he at? Who was it? Who was he was assistant? Where did he just come from? I know he was assistant in Milwaukee for a while. I didn't like him as a player. He played for Milwaukee. I didn't like him as a player. 
It's because he was a physical player. Who co- who who did he come up under? I can't think of, but you know he's a no nonsense coach. He's yeah. not gonna let all of that flam. Man, he got a, but he got superstars, man. You could do that with a young like a pro. This is the they need that. This is the Lakers, bro. They no, need yeah. we need somebody that can bring in that heat. Darvin Ham is not that dude. Watch. We don't see. I mean, we we gonna have to see. I'm him. not a Lakers fan, but I think that's a good fit. That's why I feel hurt. No, who who did you want the coach? Man, but well, I'd rather get Mark Jackson. No, why? What Mark Jackson? Why do you think they ran that man out of Golden State? No, he, I know he he kind of you know stubborn and he got his own way. But I understand that though. Nah, man. Man, can't. that's okay. Listen. Like you just LeBron said. go listen to Darvin Ham. Yes. Why? Because he know he can't yell at him. He ain't why because he gonna hit him. Yes. You're not finna no test. Nonsense. You're not gonna test no him. Nonsense. You're not gonna play with him. If he say show up to practice and you don't. Real talk. Okay, okay, okay. Him. I still don't like the pick though. Hey, I, still, I feel a, where you're going with that's this. That's a good Bernard. coach. I'm telling you. All right, all right, all right. I still don't like the pick though. We are gonna see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, the, the main. The, it, I'm not even put it on Darvin Ham or, or LeBron. The problem is Anthony Davis and and, and, and Westbrook. Anthony Davis uh, is always we, hurt. We discussed. As soon as he fall down, it's like, oh, here we go. What did I tell you his issue is? Light skin, man. Don't come off that, man. Get fresh. <laughs> Don't get up off that. All right, let's so switch gears. So we talk about that fight. Speak, we're going to stay on sports a little bit. So let's talk about that fight last week. Tank Davis. Tank Giovante Tank Davis, Baltimore, in the house, going up against that kid that did not like him. He was both undefeated. Yeah. And uh, six rounds. Six, 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 as, as Drake would say, knocked him out. But his opponent was saying, I'm knocking him out in the first Like, First off, you don't have that type of punching power. Second, he was bigger than Tank, though. I was worried. I was worried. Bigger than Tank. So, I was worried because in the first, okay, so this is what Tank said. He said he was going to fill him out. He, and he did exactly yeah. what he said. He's going to fill out the first couple rounds, two to three rounds, and then put his work in. So the first couple rounds, dude was beating Tank. Like, round one, he definitely lost. Tank lost the round one, hands down, for real. Round two, I believe Tank lost round two, too. Yeah. Round three was in. Round four, Tank put it on him. Round five was putting it on him. Six, over. Okay, but you got to remember, you can win all the rounds. Right. If I knock you out, you out. You won. You won. You can win 11 of And he 12. knocked him out so ugly. Yeah. Oh. But if did you hear what he said? He leaned. He, okay. he fell. He walked into it. But he had been doing that all fight. Leaning with his head. Mm-hmm. Leading with his head. Mm-hmm. You know, boxers are smart. They can pick so up he on that. Okay. Yeah. Leading with his head. Never catch him. He fainted when he went for it again. <laughs> and it was over. Damn. Put him on the easy street. Shout out to Tank. That's my dude. Uh, once again, so if you say, speaking, about, speaking about boxing, still trying to get the. I still have ambitions. I ain't tried yet. I have ambitions to get this interview with Mike Tyson. Yes, please. All right, Mike Tyson, we're gonna put that out there. We're gonna have make it happen. It may take a year, it may take less, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bump into somebody. It's six degrees of separation to everybody on planet Earth. I'm gonna start. We're gonna bump into somebody, it's gonna bump into somebody, they're gonna know somebody, it's gonna know him, we're gonna get that plug. Watch what I tell you. All right, Bernard. Uh Big Frank, I feel we was talking about a minute ago. I want you to bring this up again. We talking about Bud Crawford and, and, and Spence. Well, how, what was you you had to take on, on something? I... Don't like the way none of these boxers talk. I feel like they all talk, even in their own words, what was it? like somebody in they head reading with they fingers. Finger. <laughs> you, you should not talk like that. Like, and these are young boxers, and they already mess. I, as much as I love the sport, in ten years, these brothers just gonna have to write what they say on paper or get an interpreter. Man, I feel <laughs> but that Spence Crawford fight. That's gonna, that's gonna be, be it. A fight. That's gonna be it. That's gonna be the fight. But possibly, I'm gonna say a fight. Here's what happens, right? But the the anticipation is gonna be super. Cause yes. what? we've been waiting on that, and they're still in their prime. It ain't like they all washed up or they lost a couple fights. It's ready. But this is it. Is older. Yeah, they've been they've been dug at him though. I, wouldn't you? <laughs> like no nonsense. Don't play. Putting the hurt on you. you Shout out to Bill Crawford. Shout out to Omaha. Southpaw in the middle of a round. It throw you and then switch back, man. Look, and it's and it's not that it's not that Bud is fast. Bud is powerful and he's precise and he gonna walk you down. Yeah. Spence is fast, he's crafty, and he can knock you out too. Yeah, that's but he's gonna make the fight good. Spence drop his hands a lot. He does. He play a little. He play a little bit. Like, Bud, no nonsense. He okay. No, if you go, I can't think of what fight it was. Whatever fight it was with his opponent, the father kept talking. Terrence Crawford played with that man throughout the whole fight, but he punished him because I, I think I, remember, I say almost every one of his fights. You got to go back and watch it. Like whoever it was, like 
the dude's father leading up to the fight just kept antagonizing, kept and, and he told him, he said, "I'm gonna punish you for everything your father." Yes, said. I do remember that fight, and he did. He, he actually did, punished yeah. him. Yes, and when he yes, knocked yes, him out, yes. he stuck his tongue out. He told yeah, him, "Your yeah, father got that. brought yeah, you yeah, on today." Yeah, I remember that. All right, man. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna play a song. We come back. We're gonna talk about some uh, entertainment. I'm gonna go over a few things going on in the world, uh, movies, TV shows. Um, speaking of boxing. And, 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 and we're going to talk about uh, Monique and Diego. <laughs> I definitely, you being, this is your world yes, right here. Really you know, right? And, and, and it's some drama. I watched a YouTube video. You know Corey Holcomb? Oh, my. That's my, my dude, Holcomb. bro. 5150. Yeah. He gave a take on this, man. You know what I'm saying? He, we're going to talk about that. I can't wait to get in this. Y'all stay tuned. This is Merle on the Move. We'll be right back. room looking at the call id for <laughs> all right we back live here in the studio this is uh merle on the move and i got my man bernard bale yeah yeah let's go ahead and jump into uh the last not the last last thing we was talking about what was up uh, we was talking about uh what was it? we talking about boxing was it yeah something like that Let's go ahead and switch over to uh no it was it was to be talking about Monique. See, I'm thinking about fighting nah, yeah, yeah, that's the Monique. Monique. That's what we just talking about. So let's get into that and then we're gonna move on to this XXX Satoshi Yarn uh documentary I checked out. So, how do you I'm gonna let you lay it out because I already know the whole story, but for our listeners, uh that those who ain't listening, shout out to matter of fact, let's give a couple shots out to a couple people. Uh shout out to my man Randy. What up, Randy? What up, Randy? And shout out to uh his wife, Cindy. Shout out, Cindy. How appreciate y'all listening. And shout out to Cody. Cody hit me up, too. I appreciate you for uh, listening to the show, too. Uh, I got that special request uh, for the song that I got messaged for. You know who it is. I'm going to play that song for you later on. Okay. And uh, let's uh, talk to your perspective. Let's talk about this Monique thing. My perspective is Monique is in the room. Like, you can't, everybody you work with can't always be saying the same thing about you. And it's a lie. You bad to work with. You do bad business. Your, your daddy, air quote, you know, slash manager, slash husband. husband, slash boyfriend, whatever you want to call him. If he's your manager and he's doing these bogus contracts, your gripe is with him. You mad because the event, the, the venue said the DL is the headliner. I don't blame them. Bro, like, okay, let's be real. Like Corey Holcomb said, name me two good Monique jokes. There you, go. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. And I'm a comedian. Like, typically, I try to stay loose on mm -hmm. comedy issues. I can't on this one. Like, Monique is in the wrong. Like, everywhere you go, it's a problem. It's you. The common denominator is you. It's not the place. These places do good business all the time. You never hear nothing about them until you come there. I, again, me as an up-and-coming comic, if I was given the opportunity, I would work with her because I know it's a bag behind it. But I would also Just be her statue. And that's what she plays off of. She plays off, off her statue with how many, 30 years in the, in the business. Matter. But she ain't, like you said, that TV show was called, what was it called? The, the Parkers? Parkers. Nobody, Nobody watched that show. Nobody. I mean, it was on UPN. I think Moesha, uh, it came on after Moesha. You know what I mean? Something like that. Uh, then she had the Queens of Comedy and she, some more. I was, was going to say, you better say some one more. That, that carried that. I love some more even now. Some more, okay, some more top five comedians. Period. Now, Not now, just I woman. I say woman. I Absolutely. said comedian. Yeah, top. I agree. Can't wait to meet her too. Laugh for laugh. <laughs> joke for joke. Man, some more. Like they, yeah, you boy, you boy. don't want no smoke with some more. Real talk. Uh, so yeah, Monique game. And... When you think of Monique, you think of Precious. You don't think of Comedian. You think of Precious. Because, I mean, she, she won an award. She did a good job. But look at the role you played, but, being a nasty person. But like they said. So maybe that's what she did. say, that wasn't a role. That was, that was who she knew. Yeah. No, man. I mean, but no I'm disrespect. Sure. I've never met Monique. But, um, hey. I don't think, I mean, again, I would like to meet her and do a show with her. Because I know it's a bag behind her. But... She better not try me. And and her, say she just so she just went in on DL and started just taking jokes. She's gonna say she thought she was just being funny. Why are you why are you she said Tinder? She called him Tinder. Nah, see, okay, look, that's that's an excuse that women use, like, okay, I can say this and then mm -hmm. if he respond, he being tender. Uh -huh. No. You okay, we from the old school era. You know, somebody hits you, you get your lick back. Yep. You hit that man, he got his lick back. Now he tender. Like you then it was the disrespect. You disrespected that man's wife. You know his mother was in the crowd. That's what they said. Yeah, I yeah. found that out. Yeah. So you disrespected his mother, his, his wife, wife, his dead father by disrespecting the dog. Yep, because that's what they got for. You know, it's like support. you 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 attacked his manhood. You attacked every. And he's a known person too, Monique. Well, 
But why? But like Corey Holcomb said, you, you ain't got material. no jokes. You ain't got no material. You know, you're going to attack the person. But to get again, the ooze in the eyes. She couldn't have tried me because I'd get I boy. Shout out to D.L. Hughley for being respectful. I'd have gave that crowd a roll session. I'd have been like, since she want to throw sticks, I'm going to throw stones. I hear you, man. I don't know, uh, you know, where where she's going with this. Uh, they say Fifty Cent is gonna give her, is gonna work with her a couple she, things. She's not gonna try Fifty. Yeah, you know, I don't know how she's I feel not, about bro, Monique. She ain't gonna try Fifty. But she that she, but Monique, the way when you hear her speak is like she's she feels justified. She feels justification in what she's doing. She's you know, when she went kid, against man. Tyler Perry, when she went against uh, was um, uh, Lee Daniels, right? She went against Oprah. Yeah, she went against, against Oprah. Charlamagne. She go against everybody. Charlamagne, everybody. I don't, I don't knock her by going against Charlamagne. Charlamagne be tripping. Radio edit. This what this is my beef. I got beef with. Charlamagne. I'm gonna go off top a little okay. bit. I got beef with Charlamagne. Right. And this is the beef I have with Charlamagne. I mean, put it on come my YouTube videos, okay? I, if you listen to the show, you know I have beef with Charlamagne from the Breakfast Club. And when I say I have beef, I don't have beef with him personally. I have beef with his radio etiquette. Because I do this thing called radio. I've been doing radio since 2013. I've been here at the station since 2012. And it's etiquette that you have, you're supposed to have when you do a radio show. And one of the things is, he, Charlamagne does a couple of things. But one of the things that he can, that he, that he does that he does not have to do, he yawns. He yawns on the radio. <laughs> and he yawns in inopportune times. And he didn't just do it. He does it almost every show now. I, I remember when I first heard him do it, I'm like, mm. And I don't really trip, but then I heard him do another show. And he does it when Bailey was, when Angelique is doing her stuff, right? You know, he'd be, oh, that's so embarrassing. Right. Like, how are you yawning while somebody else is talking? How are you yawning? Are we that ill important that, you know, we waking you up and getting you out of your space to where you yawning on and the radio? You move your face away from the mic. Where's, where, where's, where's the etiquette? I guess I never paid attention. See now, when I listen to him, I have to pay attention. I, I'm because I'm a fan of the show. Right. I'm not a fan of Charlemagne. I respect Charlemagne the way he's moving, how he's got his TV things, right. and I think that's why. That's why I said this. I think this is why he does it because the radio show is what got him popping. But it's not his big, biggest asset. Right. He does books. He's got his own podcast network. He's doing film and TV shows. You know what I'm saying? He's got so many things going. So I salute him for doing that. He's got his own TV show, but don't. Let something go. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if it's to the point to the level to where the Brothers Club and the radio show is to the point to where you disrespecting the format by yawning. On the, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm offended by that. I take offense to it. But they also chew into the mic, too. Like, you've heard. I mean, it's now I give Angela. You know, I'm, we're not going to go into it. Because, see, I get into all Man, the other and stuff. I, listen, I, watch, I watch the 85 South show. I watch uh, uh, Hot Boss with Mike Tyson. I watch all these shows, man. And... Charlemagne and Envy are professionals. They they they've been doing radio. Right. Like Mike Tyson, he do some goofy stuff. Are he eating blackberries, blueberries, and stuff? I've seen an interview with YG. It's Mike Tyson. You know, and first of all, you're not. You ain't gonna say nothing, Mike Tyson, anyway. But you know what I'm saying? I I, I can understand that. Uh, but you see, um, uh, uh, Carlos or you know DC Young Fly being goofy or doing some some they're they, they, they comedians. They don't do radio. Charlemagne and Envy do radio. Angelique, uh, Angela uh, uh, Lee, yeah, you sound like right Webby now. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> Angela Yee, they do radio. It's an etiquette thing. That's all. Right. Enough of my rant about that. <laughs> so, XX Natasha Yard, right? I seen this documentary. Uh, me and you talked. Your son yeah. is a fan of his music. Mm -hmm. My son's yeah. a fan of his music. A lot of children uh, between the ages, I would say the ages of eight on up to 19 are big fans True. of his music, still currently. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's uh, I don't want to call it the genre of music he does, sad music, but it's kind of emotional. Yeah. Emotional music, right? Uh, Juice World also An had this artist, format yeah. of kind of music and rap. And it's not just rap because they kind of sing. Yeah. Harmonize. Yeah, yeah, harmonize. Uh, uh, Lil Uzi Vert kind of the same, but not more on the... The sad tip, but you think about his number, his biggest song was I Don't Want to Die. The suicide, uh, was it? What I you can't think of the name yeah, of the song. Yeah, it was like really big. It's about suicide. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, his biggest, Lil Uzi Vert's biggest song, it was like, I forget the name. It was like the biggest song of the year. And it was like his biggest song ever. It has something to do with suicide. And it's like, I don't know if anxiety is taking over uh, uh, the young, the young population, but we've been dealing with depression and anxiety our whole lives. And I understand how it's, how a person can feel uncomfortable in their own skin, right? Because right. that's the biggest thing is to find comfort in yourself. 
So many people try to search for comfort into other people. You know what I mean? They try to put their, how they feel and how they want to be perceived in how other people see them or how other people perceive them. And you'll end up on the wrong side doing it that way. Why well, I can't find this song? I know the song, but yeah, I'm mad some, because I can't I think can't, of it. I can't remember the name of the song. It was one of the biggest. Exo Tour Life. Exo Tour Life. Yep. Okay. Exo Tour Life. That is it. The biggest song. And uh, yeah, man. So I, I don't know. I, I just hope that the... Uh, the, the lessons from some of this stuff, like his documentary was good. I didn't know that he had he was finna go to jail right, right. before he was murdered. Uh, possibly go to jail. He was he had to go to start a trial. They're gonna pick him up. He was in jail for like six months for a domestic. And um, but anyway, it's just anxiety is like the culture now because yeah. I mean, you got the medications, you got the uh, the pharmaceutical, me the anti depression medicines, you got the opioids, you got you know alcohol. It's it's everything is out of high, right? And now you got the the puff bars, right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, kids are dealing with things in a whole different thing. And with social media and sharing videos and the video games, the outlet is bigger, right? We're going to talk about the, what happened here in Ames. But that's what we also yeah, said. You know, parent, and this is more so a message to parents. Like, if your children are into this music, listen to it. Like, yes. Don't be the shut-off generation where we just like, oh, I'm not listening to the music because it's kids. Find out what your kids are listening to. Figure out what it is they like about that music. Maybe your kid, that's they cry for help. Yeah. Talk to your children. You know, don't just talk at them. Talk to them. Let them talk and you listen. But most importantly, if they love a certain artist, that artist needs to be in your playlist. Find listen out, to that music. Out. And if it's all dark and twisted, talk with your kids. It's a reason they're relating to it. Like we have to, as parents, we, our generation, have to bridge that gap where we go back and talk to our kids, not at our kids. Absolutely. I grew up in an era that uh, in my mama's house, you can shut the bathroom door, but you don't shut that bedroom door. I got one up there. My mama took the door off. She <laughs> didn't have the door. That was <laughs> knew what's going on. Ain't no shut no door. She said you get privacy when you pay rent. There you go. That's real talk. That's real talk. Ain't nothing going on in that room that I can't know about at all times. Not just right. sometimes. In the bathroom, that's your business. But in that bedroom, the door's going to be open. That's how I go. Uh... Speaking of, let me go for some movies and music, and then we're going to end this last segment. We're going to talk about what happened, the tragedy that happened here in Ames right. like two days ago, the shooting that happened at the church, Cornerstone Church. Friday, yeah, about two, three days ago. Yeah, two, three days ago. So uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the uh, shooting down that happened in Texas a little bit more. We'll go over that. And uh, plus, we're going to talk about Joe Biden, man. We're going to talk about... <laughs> I hate, you know he did a presidential speech and nobody tuned in I on Thursday. I yawn right there when you mentioned his name, like... <laughs> And we will talk about that and a few other things. It's Merlin the Move. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the show. I am Merlin the Move, live here in the studio with Bernard Bell, my co-host. Let's go ahead and get started in this last segment of the show before Chuck D and the Don't Stop comes up next. Y'all make sure y'all tune in for that. We got a new uh, schedule that came out. For the radio station, uh, all the programs that's going on here at KHUI. So that's up. You can check it out online, or I think I might have posted on my Snapchat too. So uh, also, is something else. I oh, Pledge Drive. We got a Pledge Drive or Summer Drive or something like that going on here. We may start that next week, I believe. So you may hear Merle and you may hear Bernard do some pitches to support the radio station. So, but let's go in uh, to a little few. Uh, I'm going to go over some TV shows that I've watched real quick, and then uh, we're going to go on what's going on here. Politically and socially. So I watched this show called Obi-Wan Kenobi. I haven't watched that. Do you like Star Wars? You know what? I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but I like... Have you saw the show The Mandalorian? Yes, I watched all of them. I like that. I'm a, I'm, okay. Something that you probably don't know about me, Bernard, but I'm going to go ahead and put it out here real quick. I obsess about certain things that I like. Okay? So, like, I don't like everything. I'm not a person to just, I just go with the flow or just jump on the bandwagon. I don't like a lot of stuff. Right. But when I like something, bro, I like it. So, Star Wars, I've been a Star Wars fan since the 70s. I've seen every Star Wars movie. Every one. The wow. old ones too. More than once. I've watched Empire, Star, Empire Strikes Back probably four times. The original Star Wars movie that came out before that one probably six or seven times. I've watched Return of the Jedi probably the same amount of times. Then I watched The Phantom Menace, The Clone Wars, uh... The one that had your man uh, from taking it. Can't think of his name. Uh, the one that got in trouble saying Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Uh, 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 was he Revenge of the Sith or not? But anyway, I watched the one he was in. 
and uh, also the Mandalorian and all those too. So, but this is Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's so dope. This was the Mandalorian was great, but the Mandalorian was like new stories, right? Just some stuff that they right. made up about uh, bounty hunters, right? And I get, it. but this, hmm, this is this is Ben, bro. This is Ben Kenobi. Okay, if you watched the first Star Wars in the seventies, it started with Ben. I have no idea. What you're okay, Princess Leia. Prince, okay, Princess Leia. That is. Okay, that's this Luke's sister. Okay, so they were kids, right? And and if you watch the first Star Wars, when she had R two D two, she said, "Save me, Obi one. You're my only hope." Right? That's how it starts. The right. first Star Wars, you know, he's like an old dude out and he's trying to protect Luke, right? Well, this is where it starts. It, it like starts off with Luke and and and, and um, Leia being babies, and they tell you exactly because you know because the story. If you watch all the stories with, with Anakin, because you know who Anakin Skywalker is, Darth Vader. Right. Okay. So it shows you all that, and Ben is the one that trained Anakin. Did not know that. Yeah, that's what did, bro. Okay, okay. So and, and Ben was protected, Leia and, and and Luke, and their brother and sister. And remember when they grew up, they didn't know these brother and sister. Right. Luke had a crush on her. He wanted to date her, right. and he didn't know that Anakin was his daddy, who was Darth Vader, right? So, but he do all that, and do you know why? Uh, all, all the Jedi's are getting killed and murdered, right? It's because Darth Vader is killing them all because he was a Jedi. And you know who all the Jedi is. I did not know. And they turned him to the dark side so they could get rid of the Jedi because the Jedi had the, had the mind control and could take over the Force, right? So that's why the dark side brought him over. They're trying to get Luke too. That's so dope! Yeah. Anyway, the origin story of Ben Kenobi tells you all that. And what's so dope about it, it leads you, like all of those movies I just told you about, when they when, when the first episode of this new series of Ben Kenobi comes, uh, started, and bought it. All of those movies summarized right there. It's like, wow. It like made sense. If you really, if you don't really watch those movies, it can't really end. But if you really watch Star Wars, beautiful. Now they got a little flack about it because you know the, uh, George Lucas, who's the creator of Star Wars. I'm not gonna say he's racist, but kind of. I mean, come on, it's the world we live in. Who? It's the world we live in. I'm not condoning it, but I still like the series. I like the show. Another thing, Marvel. You like Marvel? Yeah. I'm a DC guy. I like Marvel. I'm a DC guy. Reason why I like DC, and I'm a hardcore DC guy. It's dark. It's dramatic. Marvel's like, ha ha, funny, funny. <laughs> Fart jokes to me. Better movies. Nah. Maybe the member the sent sent a Tom, uh, you know, like because they got Thor and you know and Iron Man. Yeah, eh, I get it. Superman. But not the stories. The stories are way better in dark in, in DC. No, Superman stories. Man, Batman was murdered. Batman seen his mom and daddy get killed in front of him. That's dark. So, and he made a mission of his life to commit himself to to vengeance. They hold they they Batman dead. had no real power. That's dark, man. Exactly, you can be Batman. I don't want you can't be no. You can't be Thor. Yes, I can. He's a god. All I gotta get is a, a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can be get Thor. No. I could be anything I want to be. That's what your hammer around. Don't put no limits on my, yeah. my ability. Like excellence at its best, right? Yeah. I love this mess. Yes, next, got it. Next week, I'm dressing up as Thor. Thor, you got to go. Bro, you can be bad, bad, though. That's what's so dope about first Bruce off, Wayne, baby. I'm not a billionaire. Uh, yeah, that's the first step. That's the first step, too. So hey, was with the Amazon dude. He got a little, like, he got a new body now. You see? Yeah. Jeff Bezos, you see? He got six-pack and all that. Man, I think that's surgically done. Yeah, he got the money. You said it. Billionaire. If I was a billionaire, I wouldn't go to the gym. I'm buying all my muscles. <laughs> Listen to me. If y'all hear like I won a lottery, y'all be like, "What? Well, but now I got all these muscles. I bought them. I paid for them. Lock. All right, let's go ahead and talk about uh, uh, uh So that's the show I watched. I got it. I'm sorry, y'all. I got deep into that because I'm really a Star Wars person. That's how. It's great. It's a great series. It's, uh, I think it three out. episodes out right now. It's pretty dope. Comes out every Wednesday. Also watch this show called, um, uh, I, got, I, got a, I got a bike. I got my pop's bike. So I got a Harley. I got a nice Harley. It's a chopper. So I bought that up here. And I watched this show called um, uh, Spin Off of uh, Sons of Ark. Man, the Mayans. Mayans. I love that show. Mayans. I see that's now. It's a great show. Yes, it is. I'm with you on that. Great now, show. I follow you. I've watched Son of, Sons of Anarchy. I watched it all of them. Yep. about four yep. times. Yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm following the Mayans. Yes. yes, yes, yes. The last episode was really, really I good. missed the last Oh, I'm not going to say that about first it. first one? I'm going to wait for you to watch it. Next week, we come in. We're going to talk. That, bro, that last. Don't tell bro, me. Bro, don't bro. Tell me. Intense. It's intense. Shout out to the Mayans. You know what I mean? I know it's, it's, it's fictitious and stuff, but it was really good. And Marcus is my dude. I rock with Marcus. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about if yeah. you watch the show. I rock with Marcus. You know what I'm saying? Angel. I like Angel. You know what I'm saying? And Easy. Easy in the came. I didn't like Easy. When I first, the first season of, um, of Mayans, I didn't like Easy. 
That's Cleveland like snitch for one thing, but he just seemed they slow play. Yeah, ball. yeah, he just didn't see. I, I wasn't buying him being Latino either, Mexican. I didn't. I wasn't buying it at first. Well, okay, you you know what that remind me of? The Last Samurai. In what way? With Tom, Tom Cruise. With Tom Cruise. Okay. Yep. Samurai. Yep. 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 That was crazy. Yeah, okay. That was crazy. But you know they gonna have a uh, what's the pretty woman's name? The lady play Julia Roberts is gonna play uh Harry Tubman. They <laughs> gonna have Julia Roberts play Harry Tubman. I will. Yeah, they was gonna do. They talked about it. I, I retired that. from radio after yeah, two shows. Man. If they ever speaking did. of that, man, that's so crazy. Because think about it, man. Back what it was called was broad was Broadville days where the, uh, uh, black people had to come in the back door and they, and they wouldn't let us perform in the club. So the white people would take the black people's music and wear the black face and pretend that they was black people singing. Sing. So white people would paint their face black and and perform black people's songs in front of a white audience because they wouldn't allow black people in the club. And now we got the Elvis movie coming out. Ooh! He ain't Fish nothing but hound dog. Barking all the time. I'm gonna watch that movie though. I'm I'm not. I was on the fence. Okay. Oh, no, hold on, stop. Your mentor. What did Chuck D say about that? Oh, we can't. Eat. Elvis was a hero to most, but sell out. Some racist, the sucker was simple and plain. He said, MF him and John Wayne. <clears throat> Who's a native of uh, Winterset, Iowa. But guess what? I bet you they're not going to tell the truth. And they this, is, this, movie. That's, this is why I, I, I had to watch it. I say this to my stepfather. Shout out to my stepfather, Big big Jack, Big George Brock. He's a blues singer. And uh, he's got a band. He said, I told him I wasn't going to watch it. He said, uh, I'm going to watch it. I said, why? He said, because that's my genre. Like, he does the blues. Right. So all the people that, that Elvis stole music from, like he wants to see how they play it. Right. Like, are they going to like tell the truth, like no. you just said, or how he got this music, or are they going to just run with it? So I, mean, I ain't even talking about the music part. I'm talking about him personally. Yeah. How old was he when he got married? Uh, I don't know, but I know the girl was 14. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie Press was like yeah. 14 years old. Mm. And he was like 19, I think. No, he was older than that. Was he older than that? Yeah. yeah. He was grown, I know that. But you know, they ain't going to That's story right all day. Ooh, man, what's what's the next topic? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got, we got, I had to talk about the movies and entertainment because those are some things I definitely wanted to talk about. Uh, music wise, I don't think really nothing really hot out. So let's go ahead and change over to some social and political issues. So, uh, just a couple of days ago, we had, um, uh, had some, some shootings in the town of Ames lately. Right. I remember when I moved here in 2009, the only shooting that I was hearing about or murder that I was hearing about here in town. Was something that happened at Casey's. I think some ex guy, some guy with a girlfriend, scorn lover, or something like that, and went to Casey's and killed her and so I'm not sure if that's that. accurate, but I think that's what I heard. Yeah. And now we had a shooting over here at the quarters. That's the name of that apartment complex. Oh, okay. The quarters. Off of uh, South 17th Street, a uh, teenager shot a person. Yeah. Was there was another teen that he shot? Uh the I older think person. it was maybe a nineteen year old, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh so that happened. That was like what, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, Memorial Day. Yeah, then about a month before that, some other guy got shot over here in North Ames. Right, over there by the mall. Murdered, what, what, killed. Yeah. Um, and now, two days ago, we had a, a mass shooting. I guess you can say three people shot. Shot right. himself and two two young ladies. And it comes to find out that uh, I guess he was in a relationship and with one of them. Off with him. And uh, he went there specifically to do harm, and that's what he did. That's sad, man. Try to, I mean, condolences to all of the family of the people who lost. You know, nobody wants to hear about anybody getting hurt. I mean, it's it's a sad subject. And yeah, we gonna talk about. It. So uh, speaking of, I mean, we don't, I don't want to get into the facts of the case because we really don't know exactly what's going on. But let's just talk about the elephant in the room: guns. Um, first thing people say is guns don't kill people. People with guns kill people. Uh, I agree, but. Me being a gun owner, you also right. are a legal gun owner. Um, I have to put the word legal out there. We're both legal. Yes, yes, legal gun owners. And uh, I, 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 I don't want to read into the myth that, you know, I'm scared of the government to come and take my guns. That's not what I'm, I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is me being in a situation or my loved ones being in a situation where I'm overpowered by a person that has no soul. Right. Um, Because typically, lately, it seems like when these mass shootings are going on, that's what the perpetrator has. They have they not just have a a, a handgun; they have an assault rifle with high with high power magazines. And some of them they got the little bumper bumper stock to make them fully automatic. Um, Us being registered gun owners, we don't walk around like that. 
We don't no. walk around. We don't go to the grocery store or the movie theaters or gas stations no. with, with, with long guns, long rifles, okay? So, yeah, yeah. if, if I'm facing a situation like that, if I'm in the grocery because it's happening everywhere. Churches, grocery stores, elementary schools. It's happening yeah, it's everywhere. everywhere yeah. Okay? So, if I'm faced in this situation and all I have is my handgun, yeah, I have, I'm in a better situation than if I didn't. But that, that security guard at the cop, uh, at that uh, grocery store in Buffalo had a pistol and shot the, the guy twice. But he had armor. He had body armor on him. That's the cheat code that they have this body armor. And, and he killed that guard with a high power rifle. So, like you said, the cheat code. It's like, how do we combat that? You know what I mean? If, if when I'm out with my family, it's my job to keep them safe. Right. It's my job. I don't care how nobody feel about it. And they being prideful. They being super masculine. I said this the other day. Why can't? Why is it bad for a man to be a man nowadays? I can be a man. I shouldn't have to feel bad for being manly. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. Right. But it's okay to be a man. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, where do we go with this, Bernard? Do you? I feel it's assault rifles. I don't feel it's guns. I feel like it's the overpowering guns. That's right. But with tougher gun laws. They only apply to legal gun owners. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't want to say I'm pro long gun, but as as a as a method of home defense, I would say have one. Yes. You know, but like we said, we're not walking the streets with these. Mm -hmm. But it's it's one of those things. I'm trying to, I don't even really know the right words to say. Like, like everybody's always saying we need tougher gun laws. People who illegally own guns, they don't care what gun laws are. Those tougher gun laws only stop regular citizens like people who try to legally do it from not being able to protect themselves or their home. It's one of those things like, yeah, no one should be walking in the grocery store with a long gun. Like, the, that's one of those things we can't prevent that. Like, yeah, we can say get rid of them, but what about the ones that are already out here? Like... What why, why what would be the what would be the reason to have to have or to not have to but to have a long rifle or long gun in your home? Home defense. For what? How many people? An intruder. An uh, intruder or more multiple. It don't matter. When they because a handgun could do the same. True, but Merle, you know if somebody come in your house, I agree home. with you. I just I just want to see the dynamics. I agree, yeah. bro. I'm, I'm I'm with. I have no problem with assault rifles. I just have a problem with what's going on in the world with assault rifles. But it's not, it's the people. Mm -hmm. If you look at every person, But they're getting them somehow. How are they getting them? Man, look. Because we're, we're, we're not, we're not, like the Sandy Hook situation, I think the guy took it from his mom. I think she had, she had assault rifles, right. something like that. This, the, the, the guy, the 18 year old, he went and purchased it. He went and purchased it one uh, other day. Uh, or did the guy in California, he purchased his guns like the day he did it. <sighs> so See, they're not even stealing it, right? They're just like, you know, breaking in house and the guns getting in the wrong hands. They're actually going to purchase these guns. And then, like, how are they getting the body on? Now, that part, I'm confused, though. Like, I know as if far as... If you're not law enforcement. As far as purchasing a gun, you can go to, like, a gun show mm -hmm. and buy guns. That's, you know, that's different. Now, this body armor, that I don't know. First off, I... Well, yeah, I want to know what you And it's working, evidently. Yeah, very much so. So, yeah, that's... that's, And, and it's like we talk about it, and then it happens, and we talk about it, and it happens. It's the guns. Yeah, it's, 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 it's mental ill. It's always been mentally challenged people, mentally ill people, right? It's just it's heightened because we got social, we got social media. Right. We have the news, and they love reporting it. You know what I'm saying? They're supposed to, but it seems like it's it's always there, right? It's always lurking. Even if the story happened three days ago, they'll just keep on talking about it until right. the next one happens, right? So it's got to be it's got to be the guns. It's got to be the rifle. It's got to be because they used to have a law that you could not buy militarized style assault rifles. It was a law. From like the 80s until like either the early or mid 2000s, it was against. It was now you couldn't even buy an M16 or an AR, and then they deregulated to where it was okay. And they said that the mass shootings went up like ten times the amount that it used to be. Well, okay, so again, even if you regulate it, come back with the strict regulations. What does that do for the ones that are already out there? 
Buy back program. I don't know, bro. Nobody gonna touch. Nobody buying them back. Nobody. T- First off, nobody gonna turn them in. Yeah. I don't know. I just, you know, I think, like you said, I think the cheat. They have the uh, the the bad guys that want to do harm has have a cheat code. Yeah. They can arm themselves with you know hot passing magazines, body armor, and 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 go in soft target locations, hospitals where it's not a lot of guards, churches where there's no security guards, elementary school. I mean, they're 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 doing things. Hurt people, hurt people. I get that. Right. But man, movie theaters. I mean, it's, and, 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 and it's not saying that is that what happened here was a mass shooting, but one of the one of the targets that one of the ladies got hit wasn't even a target. Right. Yeah. See, I, I mean, we talk off air. I'm not gonna say it on air. I mean, mm-hmm. I have a different view on that. Like, I don't believe like if you, you know, you want to hurt yourself, so you decide to hurt other people. Like, no, nah, I, I don't like that. That's a cop out. I definitely I believe that's a that's that's the worst form of humanity. Right to uh to, to want to hurt yourself to the point to where before you do it you want to hurt and inflict as much pain on other people in the process because evidently that's what they want to do they want to end the, they want to end whatever they're going through by ending their lives but feel like that they're so hurt they have or that they have to take them. more people with them or take out because it was I mean just the thought of this guy shooting children multiple. He was in that classroom that the, the shooting down in Texas. He was in that classroom for over an hour. Over an hour. He was in the classroom. Like you said, the parents was pleading to the police to go and they save their kids. The, they were scared. The, the police, to me, my opinion, that they were scared. The guy had a long gun and, and some pistols and they were scared. They'd die. Why well, sign up to be a police man? I mean, it said on the card, don't it say to protect and, and serve? serve. So yeah, anyway. So these politicians, you know, you know, I seen Governor Kim Reynolds spoke out about uh what happened here in Ames, Iowa, you know. They're not gonna change the gun laws. I, I don't know what I don't know what to do. Cause like I said, I'm in favor. I'm not against gun uh gun control. I'm I'm not I don't know, I don't know how to put it. You know, I I, I still believe in, you know, protecting yourself. Uh I, I, I do believe in I should be able to Carry yeah. a legal firearm, but I don't know, man. It seems like if anything changes, it's gonna make it harder for people to look like me and you. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, you know, most of the people that got that want guns got them already. You right. know what I mean? So anyway, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, my condolences once again to the to the uh, family and uh, the people that were hurt and uh, lost loved ones in that incident that happened here in Ames. And uh, let's just—I mean. If, if you're religious or not, you know, just try to do the right thing. If you don't feel like praying or, or you know, just, just you know, do the right thing as humans, right? And uh, Show D. Don't Stop comes up next. We'll holla at y'all. We out. Peace. Where my song at? Oh, 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 no song, Merle. I did something. I don't know what this is. Is it a clean burger? Yeah, it's clean. I made sure it's safe. Oh, okay. I made sure it's safe. I've done that before and had to stop it. It's clean.